Tires are the glue that keeps an RV safely planted on the road. It's such an important topic that we've made several videos about it. Today, we'll take a deeper look at how we replace our tires and how we save money in the process. Since RVs are typically driven fewer miles per year than cars, it's common for their tires to require replacement due to age long before their tread wears out. Every tire is stamped with the date of manufacture, typically referred to as the DOT date. The last four digits indicate the week and year the tire was made. This one, on our tag axle, was manufactured the 30th week of 2009, which is late July. Since Michelin specifies that 10 years is the longest they can safely be used, and it's now early 2019, their retirement date is almost here. When our RV was five years old, the front end went out of alignment without our realizing it. Unfortunately, that required replacing the two front tires early. We made the best of the situation by starting an unusual tire rotation schedule that's worked well for us ever since. Instead of replacing all eight tires at once, this time we'll replace two, and five years from now, we'll replace the other six. Here's how we do it. We currently have five-year-old tires on the steer and drive axles. As I mentioned, the tag axle tires are just coming up on 10 years, so we'll discard the tag axle tires. Move the steer axle tires to the tag axle. Install brand new tires up front and do nothing with the drive axle. Assuming that those six rear tires remain healthy and usable through their entire 10-year maximum lifespan, we'll replace them five years from now, when of course, all eight tires will be five years older. Here's how we'll do the next rotation. We'll discard all six rear tires, move the steer tires to the tag axle, and install brand new tires on the steer and drive axles. This rotation allows us to get the full 10-year life out of these very expensive tires, but without ever having rubber that's more than five years old on our very important steer axle. To save money, we'll be using one of our favorite benefits of membership in the Family Motor Coach Association, the Michelin Advantage Program, which lets us buy directly from Michelin at a steep discount. To get the job done right while we're here in Southern California, we've come to Redlands Truck and RV. Trusted friends recommended Redlands, and we've heard nothing but positive reviews. They're an authorized Michelin dealer and make it incredibly easy to take advantage of the FMCA Tire Savings Program. Once we get parked, we head inside to get checked in. When we made our appointment, we simply told them the model and size tires we need and how many. Our rig came with Michelin XZA2 Energy, which we've always been happy with, so we'll install the same ones again. Everything else can be easily handled today in just a few minutes, as the service writer walks us through a couple of simple steps. The way the Advantage program works is that you buy your tires right from Michelin. We get the discounted price by calling a special toll-free number and giving them our FMCA number and credit card information. While we're getting squared away with Michelin, Redland's staff is busy getting our rig ready for the shop. Anyone who's had work done on their RV knows that so much depends on whether they respect that this is our home and not some kind of delivery truck or other work vehicle. Of course, they knew we were filming, so we made a point of insisting that we wanted to be treated exactly the same as anyone else. Step one is an initial road test. Since we'll be having an alignment done after the tires are installed, this can help spot irregularities in the way the RV drives as well as checking for other items that might need attention. Our tech removes and tags our tire pressure monitoring sensors to make sure they go back in the correct position. After jacking the steer and tag axle tires off the ground, he places the jack stands and off come the lug nuts and the wheels. The air gets released from each tire, and one by one, the rims get broken down and remounted, using the coolest equipment we've ever seen. 
In the past, our tires were broken down from the rims by laying them flat and swinging a tool that looks like a pickaxe to break the bead. This looks like a much better way to do it. Now new valve stems get installed. Our tech not only makes sure to mount the tires with the DOT dates facing outward so they're easy to see, he even lines them up with the valve stems. Now anytime we want to check the dates, they're right there by the valves. Once the tires are mounted, they get filled with nitrogen. They even add a little green collar to the stem to indicate that the tires are filled with nitrogen. For rigs without tire pressure monitoring sensors, they install green valve stem caps instead. Redlands pay so much attention to detail that they purge the air out until they confirm a 95% or higher concentration. Computer spin balancing is next. These may look like new tires, but they're actually old ones that have been replaced. Like I said earlier, RV tires almost always age out before they wear out. Now it's time to remount them and torque the lug nuts to the correct specs. Torquing lug nuts can sometimes be a two-person job. On go the lug nut caps and the hub caps and finally the TPMS sensors. The last step is to clean and protect the tires with the exact same product we use, Aerospace 303. To find our new DOT dates, all we need to do is look near the valve stems, where the tech so considerately placed them. You can see that this tire was manufactured during the 41st week of 2018, which is early to mid-October. With this being the end of February, the tire was made just over four months ago. With the time involved in the shipping, distribution, and storage of tires, it's perfectly normal for them to be installed six months or more after the date of manufacture. Nothing unusual and nothing to worry about. Just be aware of your DOT dates and keep a record of exactly what they are in each location on your RV. If all goes as planned, you can see that we'll be ready for six new tires in late 2024. Since we knew we'd be getting our RV way during our visit, we made sure to top up our fuel and come in with full fresh water and empty gray and black tanks. Now when we get weighed, we'll be in a typical fully loaded configuration. Portable scales are the best way to weigh an RV, since each position can be weighed individually. Right and left front wheels. Right and left drive wheels. and right and left tag axle. All wheel positions are important to know, and because we have a tag axle, we have six weights instead of four. Now our alignment tech can set the pressures based on the Michelin chart for our particular tires and the weight they're carrying. The correct way to set tire pressure based on corner weights is a topic for a future video. Since we're a diesel pusher riding on air suspension, Checking and setting the correct ride height is critical. Our alignment tech then takes our rig out for a road test, looking for signs of pulling to one side or other issues that might be going on with our suspension or steering. He then drives up onto the rack to do the alignment. We have no idea how this works, but it obviously takes a lot of training to use this high-tech equipment. The computerized system lets the tech know exactly how to set every alignment parameter perfectly. He'll adjust as needed until the system confirms perfect chassis alignment. Once everything's set, the equipment can be removed from the wheels. 
He'll grease the steering and suspension, and we can now come down off the rack. Now it's time for a final road test, making sure the RV drives exactly right and that the steering wheel is perfectly straight. If it needs a slight adjustment left or right, our tech brought along a helper to let him know when it's perfect. Once the final road test confirms all is well, we'll head back to the shop. Before we go, our RV gets a thorough cleaning of the front side windows, the windshield, the mirrors, door handles, entryway, dash and steering wheel, brake release, anything that a tech might have touched. They make sure the generator starts and runs, then the protective plastic and paper come out and the floor gets wiped. The hydraulic fluid, engine oil, and transmission fluid levels get a double check to make sure they show on the dipsticks and the generator gets shut down. They're so thorough that they alert the office via text when each RV is completed, cleaned, checked, and ready for pickup. Finally, our rig gets pulled into position for us to hook up and make an easy exit. As all of this incredibly thorough attention to detail was going on, we asked repeatedly if everyone gets all this service or if it was just for the cameras. We were assured that this is standard operating procedure for every customer. Besides all that, while you're in for service, Redlands has their own private RV park right down the street that's free for service customers while their RVs are being worked on. It's got 50 amp full hookups, has a customer service lounge with a TV, comfortable chairs, computer desks, and free Wi-Fi. There's also a free laundry room and free coffee. And behind the sites is a row of trees with oranges, free for the taking. The park is securely gated and exclusively for Redland service customers. They even come pick up your rig for service in the morning so you can hang out in the lounge or pick oranges. Using the Michelin program for the purchase of just two tires saved us far more than the cost of an annual FMCA membership, and it's just one of dozens of benefits. We'll include links below to both the Family Motor Coach Association and Redlands Truck and RV in Redlands, California. As always, safe travels and thanks for watching.